Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss the best men's dress shoes under $300. <laughs> If you're a longtime follower of the Gentleman's Gazette, you can see that this is a slightly different format. We wanted to try something that was a bit more casual and more conversational, hence the chairs. So if this is a format that you like and that you'd like to see more of, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. So we went out, we looked at all the dress shoe brands under $300 that we thought were worth reviewing. And we got a pair of each of the brands. They all sent them to us. So it's a level playing field. No one paid us to say anything. There's no other kind of relationship that we're hiding. We got the pairs of shoes from all of them mm -hmm. and we all tried them, right? Right. I think basically what we're trying to do here is even though these are ultimately opinions and they are subjective, we were trying to be as objective in our analysis as possible. We didn't consider shoes from Cole Haan, Johnson Murphy and Florsheim because they're just too low in quality from what we've seen. We also reached out to Thursday Booths, Charles Thurwitt, Royal Republic, Herring, Barker, Bexley, or Finsbury. We didn't hear back from them at all. We reached out again and we just figured if the communication was so difficult, we would not include them. We also knew that the video was already long, so we didn't bother. This is a popular video. We may do those in the future. With that being said, let's jump right in. And I think the first pair is Beckett Simonon. We both got a pair of shoes and they're listed as a retail price of $300 on the website, but uh, most of the time it's crossed out and it's $199. Right. It's kind of interesting. It's a bit of like peasant catcher in my book, but... Uh... <laughs> that's one way to put it, yeah, right. I think that's something that a lot of brands are doing these days. They'll sort of have the original list price and then the sale price to make you feel like you're getting a better deal than you really are. Yeah, but the problem is, you know, if it's like $300, right, crossed out, all year long is just that's not the price the real price is 199 right so in my book the real price of those shoes is 199 yeah. so the model i chose was uh, durant which is a capital oxfords with some broguing in town and this one is the dean it's an oxford that does not have any broguing and this one is in a color they call bordeaux backstory on mine i would gotten a pair of shoes from them years back in a size 10. it was also the model durant and the Lance was quite elegant, but they were a little too small. Mm -hmm. And I remember I wore them at the airport and got a lot of blisters. Ah. So I never wore them again. Right. Now, when I got my Durant pair, it actually looked a whole lot different. So a lot of things changed, right? Originally it was made in Portugal. The, now they're not made in Portugal anymore. The whole last, the look, everything has changed. So it's virtually a new shoe, mm -hmm. even though the, the style is kind of the same. Right. Interesting. This is... Uh, the first experience that I've had with Beckett Simonon, of course, it's a fairly popular shoe. It's reviewed often in the menswear space. So what do you think when you got the shoe right out of the box? Right. Well, my first impressions here were that I liked the shape of it. I liked the last that they had put it on, you know, fairly conservative shape, kind of old school. You know, it's got the round cap toe. toe. Exactly. Right. Nothing extreme. Right. Uh, so that was nice, but I did notice that there was actually a, a good deal of color variance in between the leather used for most of the body of the shoe and the leather used for the tongue. They were greatly different in color. Yeah, I think what happens is they, they finish stuff, right? And then as they finish it, maybe they finish the tongues at a different point in time or a different person does it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think on my shoes, that was not so obvious. But what really stood out to me was that the left shoe was a lot lighter hmm. than the right one. <laughs> the, the left one almost looked like a cap toe had one color and the upper was lighter. It was almost like a two-tone spectator and oh. the right one wasn't that way. Weird. So quality control was not good on that one, right? Right. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think those were my, my impressions of that there as well. Okay. Yeah, when I noticed that, I reached out to them and said, hey, what's going on? And they just said, hey, we don't have this pair again, but we can send you another one. They did, mm -hmm. and that was a Dean. And in that case, the left and right shoe had a very similar color, so that, that looked great. But then the tongues of those <laughs> were a lot darker. And then if you wear Oxfords, you know, you have that V, and if your foot is a little thicker, or mm -hmm. let's say it's hotter and your feet swell a little bit, you can see what's behind the V. Right. So now all of a sudden you have this dark tongue mm -hmm. with a lighter 
kind of upper lacing area, I think it look, looks weird. Right. And of course, you could, you know, try to modify that yourself with polish or whatever it may be, but that's going to be kind of difficult to do. You really just want leathers that are, if they're supposed to match, you want them to match out yeah. of the box. I guess you can always polish a lighter leather and make it darker. That's mm -hmm. easier with a darker shoe polish. Right. But the other way around, you have to get out some alcohol. Mm -hmm. That's a little more tricky. And I mean, I'm buying a new shoe out of the box. They should be the same color. I would agree. Okay, yeah. good. Um, yeah, leather. What, what do you think? Well, uh, generally, it seems like nice leather. I think it's uh, full grain calfskin is at least what they advertise. So yeah, Argentinian. Right. I think. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. I mean, frankly, the the terminology full grain. I mean, I've seen the cheapest Chinese belts advertised as full grain calf leather. Right. So it's hard to kind of use that as a standard because it's not protected. Mm -hmm. But just from the feel of it, I think it's a. Uh, Somewhat soft leather, yep. right? I mean, I noticed my the one on the Dean that mm -hmm. I got second is softer than on the first pair. Interesting. So obviously there's some variances there. Right. Um, yeah. And I think it might, you know, scuff a little bit easier than some other leathers would too. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. One other thing I noticed was that the original pair that I got with those two different color tones, it had like imperfections, like little dots of color or stuff like that. Again, mm -hmm. something I would expect that quality control should catch, but they didn't. Right. Which um, in this particular case can be a little troublesome because the way Beckett Simono works is not like a traditional shoe retailer, right? Right, right. They'll have sort of uh, new designs that they'll market to people, but you have to kind of pre-order or buy into the new design and then you'll eventually get it. And then that design goes away after a while. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's a good system in the sense that it means they don't have to stock inventory of shoes which brings the cost down mm -hmm. and they can pass it on to the consumer, which is in itself a good idea. But if I have to wait three or four months before I get the shoe and then my shoe has imperfections, I have to maybe send it back and wait for a new one. Mm -hmm. But they're probably not going to have a new one because they only make them on order and stuff. So right. that can be the trouble then. You would hope in that case that the quality control would maybe be a little higher, given that they're not going to have a lot of extra stock of things. But True. And I mean, at the same time, I mean, they knew we'd, we'd review those shoes, right? Mm -hmm. They knew we told them what we we're going to do. So it was just surprised that they would send something like that to us. Right. So as far as workmanship is concerned, I think things are generally pretty solid. You know, I didn't see any uh, flagrant errors with the stitching or how the sole was attached to the rest of the shoe. Uh, but again, you know, I think just in the way that they selected the leather and sewed it together, the, the general impression I got is that there wasn't the utmost degree of care there. It, yeah. it seems like maybe if there are a few of these more standard models that they do keep stock of, that they just sort of I hate to say this, but maybe put them together with what they have instead of really going to that nth degree to make sure that every single pair is totally up to that perfect standard. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Attention to detail is not the utmost thing in those shoes. And I mean, it's, you know, Blake construction is like a 360 welt on the outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was good that we had shoes with broguing and without, because I noticed if you look uh, at the broguing, you know, it was very kind of inconsistent. Mm -hmm. and it wasn't like in the center. So that I, I thought was a little kind of off. Sure. And originally in the shoes that were made in Portugal, that was all really nice and neat. Now they switched um, production to Colombia and maybe they weren't able to kind of train the people exactly. I mean, obviously they didn't just move Portuguese shoemakers to Colombia. Right. They just used <laughs> local shoemakers and stuff, mm -hmm. but maybe something was lost there in transition. Yeah. Because I can also see from the old ones to the new ones, like the density of the broguing mm -hmm. has, has decreased. So there's more space now. Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. If you just look at those two, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's different spacing. And here, just like it wobbles more, you know, it's almost the one line and then it goes in the middle and hmm. just a little different. Uh -huh. So in terms of sizing, I got a 10 and a half US this time, which is on the shorter side. Usually I have like US 11 in most shoes. Um, last time I got the size 10, which was too small. So I think this was the right size. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
The last, I think it's quite elegant, not as elegant as it used to be, mm -hmm. but again, then I got blisters. Right. Now I have a lot of room for my toes, toe box. Um, I notice it's quite a bit higher than before. Mm -hmm. So for my foot, it's almost a little too roomy. I see. And the, the problem with, with it being too roomy is that you'll likely get creases over time between your cap and your lacing, like mm -hmm. right here, because there's just air. So as you walk, it just kind of bends it more. Right. right. That's something that I noticed too. I thought overall the fit was not bad, but as I stepped and put pressure on the front of the shoe and stepped forward, uh, there was almost immediately some creasing that I could see happening. So I would assume that that would only continue to become more and more noticeable over time. Okay. Yeah, so in terms of comfort, I think the new last is a lot more comfortable than the old one just because of the extra room. Mm -hmm. um, heels a little wide for me, so I have to, yeah, have them tight, wear them tightly. Mm -hmm. Overall, I think the leather is is maybe a bit softer than some other brands. It's kind of in the middle, it's not really soft, it's not really super hard. Maybe like medium stiff, I'd, I'd describe it as. I'd say that's fair, yep. And I think uh, for me, generally, comfort, I would say, was, was fairly good as well. I. Uh, I guess I'm just probably in the habit of, of always tying my shoes fairly tight uh, to make sure that I really do get a snug fit. Uh, so in that case, I didn't really feel any slipping or sliding around. They felt like they were hugging my feet to a good degree. Okay, I think I have slim heels, mm -hmm. so that sometimes can just lead to sure. noticing that extra room there in the heel. Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's just a unique business model that you don't really find very often. It's it's more like a Kickstarter model almost, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just on an ongoing basis. Right. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you get it at a lower price, $199. I think looking at all the shoes you can buy, at $199 is, is a pretty good price yeah. for the kind of leather and it's a classic looking shoe. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot better than, you know, Johnson Murphy, Kohan, Florsheim, and all these brands, right? I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's better than that. Yeah, anything that you would really get at the under $100 level, it's, it's certainly better than something in that range. I think for, yeah, right around $200 for what you're getting, I think it's a, a decent value overall. Yeah, and I think I would have liked it a lot more. Like my rating would probably be more like, you know, three and a half, maybe even a little more mm -hmm. out of five stars. Maybe even four if they would have been perfect, but with that lack of attention to detail, the different colors, I'd really just think it's more like of a two for me mm -hmm. because of those issues. Like I don't want to deal with different color shoes and then they of course didn't have the replacement pair and stuff. And if I wait that long already, yeah, I mean, maybe I need it for a wedding or something, then I want the shoe now and then just wait forever. Mm -hmm. Yep, as it stands, I uh, I gave these a three out of five. Maybe, maybe that was a little generous, uh, but I think anywhere from two and a half to three out of five is, is probably where these would even sit collectively between the two of us. Yeah, and obviously, you know, we're different people, so we value things differently. So we just want to show you like what our experience was. We tested them independently and then compare mm -hmm. our notes, right. right? Just so we give you a little more insight. So next up, we have selections from Taft. Uh, in my case, the one I got, it retails for $235. Uh, this is a model they call the Beck, and the color, which as you can see, it's kind of a tan color, they refer to it as burnt honey. Yeah, I got this kind of modern one, I think called the Russell in London. Also $235. Um, I would have gotten a more classic dress shoe, but it wasn't available. It seems like they're a lot out of stock. Mm -hmm. I don't really stock it a lot. Yeah, first impressions, I mean, it's a shoe that's very bold. I'd probably never buy it myself, simply because the cost per wear is just so high. I mean, 99% of the cases I can't wear this one. I mean, you can wear this a lot more. It's just a regular right. wingtip Oxford. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, and from everything I understand of Taft and how they're trying to differentiate themselves in the space, they're doing a lot more with these shoes in fabric that has, you know, bolder patterns or colors or that kind of a thing. So if you're more in the market for that kind of fashion forward look, that may be an option for you. But I think as it stands with 
both of our wardrobes skewing more traditional, there's probably not going to be as much of a place for a shoe like this. Yeah, because if you wear with a pair of denim, I mean, it's really bold, right? I mean, I could see maybe a summery pair of pants in a neutral shade that's solid. Because anything striped like a seersucker right now, it's just too much pattern going on. It's just not really useful. But um, yeah, leather. Right, uh, this one generally, I think what I wasn't crazy about really is just the way that they've chosen to do the kind of the color variance or the patina in the finishing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why it doesn't really speak to me because it is definitely unique that there's lots of different subtle shading around the shoe. Yeah. And that's cool, but oftentimes, you know, like they just went here in a cap to a medallion and just did half. Usually like if you just make it dark here and here, and keep that lighter. Like I think the Beckett Simonon did that better. It just looked nicer than, than this one does. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is like Italian wool fabric. They weren't very specific. Mm -hmm. um, this looks like somewhat of a calf leather, right? I believe they called it box calf leather on yeah. the website. Yeah. yeah. And that's in itself good leather. It's a little stiffer. It's not so super soft, which is nice. It kind of holds its shape over time. Mm -hmm. um, on the inside, you'll also have leather. But what I noticed there, their shoe, unlike most of the others, have this kind of foam insert. Mm -hmm. So you can tell immediately, right, that there's something going on. Right. Yeah, mine is in terms of workmanship. It's like play construction, stitching is neat, the tassels are nice, there's nothing to complain about. If you look at the sole, you know, there's not the fine edging that you see maybe in a Mirman shoe. But um, overall, it's, it's, it's a decent workmanship. Made in Spain, I don't see anything to complain about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, I would echo that. Uh, no obvious problems for me in either of these. The stitching was nice and neat and even. I would say overall the, the workmanship strikes me as solid but kind of unremarkable. Yeah, what I noticed was it had these interesting like knobs at the bottom, mm -hmm. right? Almost reminiscent of something like a day and night rubber sole that you would see with an Allen Edmonds shoe. True, but I mean, whenever I see those kind of rubber leather combination soles, it's usually a cheaper shoe. It's right. kind of, to me, it's like a hallmark of a cheaper shoe. Mm -hmm. um, you, I you know, were they all leather? And... Mine had a, a rubber pad in the center of the bottom of the sole, so Got the it. section was rubber. Uh, but I didn't find that that would really give me enough traction. Uh, a brief aside here is that most of the shoes we got had, you know, standard smooth leather bottoms as exactly. many dress shoes do. Because I have poor balance from a physical disability, one thing that I have to do with many of my shoes, and I've done them with all of them here today, is had rubber half soles or sole protectors applied to the bottoms of the shoe to give me a bit more grip and traction as I wear yeah. them around. I got a size 8 US, which is size 41 in European sizing. Uh, as far as the last is concerned, I wasn't really thrilled with the shape of this shoe. Uh, from the back toward the heel, it seemed kind of round and bulbous to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And then the toe, on the other hand, was longer than you would typically see, kind of pointier. So More modern. It, it's got this sort of teardrop shape, which I'm just personally not crazy about. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree that the heel is just a little wider and stuff. I like the front shape, especially for this kind of a loafer. It's like more elongated. Mm -hmm. I think it looks elegant on there. Um, honestly, I wear, wear them mostly at home because it's kind of like a nice house shoe. <laughs> in the fabric pattern, right? Like a velvet olive slipper. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, they were comfortable. I didn't have any complaints, especially with that foam insert. I mean, it makes them easy to wear, right? Mm -hmm. You can definitely feel it. The problem with the foam is usually that over time, the foam kind of wears out more quickly than the leather and then your shoe gets bigger. Right. So then you have to take it out and maybe find a similar insole again. Mm -hmm. It's just more work. That's why most high-end shoes are like leather and there's not much cushiness in there. Right. Because if you get the fit right, they're still very comfortable, mm -hmm. but you don't have that extra. And some of that wear. cushion, especially in a good uh, Goodyear welted shoe, can can come from cork as well. So you don't need that that foam insert in there. Exactly, and the cork is, is more, you know, is better long-term mm -hmm. than the foam. Mm -hmm. Uh, as far as fit and comfort are concerned for me, uh, because I am so thin, I have this 
the, the tibia bone here on my feet is, it sticks out. It's a little bit more pronounced than it is for some people. Yep. So as a result of that, there are some shoes that if they're cut a little bit higher here, can ride up and start rubbing against the bottom of that bone there, yeah. which can be pretty uncomfortable. Absolutely, you've got blisters. I had it before with some shoes. I didn't notice it with, with this shoe, did you? Yes, uh, these were definitely giving me a little bit of discomfort with rubbing on that bone. There. Got it. So if you ever had that at home with a pair of shoes, Taft may not be the brand for you. Honestly, I didn't really know anything about the brand. We just put it in the lineup because viewers shared and asked us to review them so we did mm -hmm. um, i think my verdict is more like two out of five again because in this case i just can't really use the shoe a whole lot and i they didn't have a single classic option available in my size so it's like mm, i don't know right. right yep overall i would be in the same ballpark anywhere from two and a half to three stars maybe is where i would land with these I had seen them advertised on Facebook and a couple of other places. Okay. So I was at least generally aware of the brand, but probably not one, at least from these initial impressions that I would be running out to get more of. Got it. Okay, so the next brand up is Loke. In my case, I got a penny loafer. This is in suede and you can see it's, it's olive green, a little bit of a bolder color. A little more unusual. Right. Uh, the, the model name is Eaton, and this is uh, 185 pounds, which comes out to about $230 US. Yeah, and I think that includes about like 20% VAT. So in the past, you could just subtract that and they would ship it to the US. But I noticed Loke disallowed European stockists to ship them to Canada and the US. Mm. So if you're in Europe, it's very easy to find those shoes. And Loke has always been known as a value brand, mm -hmm. kind of English styling. But now in the US, it's a lot harder to actually get the shoes. And I don't know why they did that. Maybe they want to sell them directly and have a markup in there. But it's a little disappointing, I thought. Right, I think so too. Yeah. So I actually got um, a pair of boots from their 1880 series, which we'll cover in another video of this style when it's all about boots and best boots under a certain budget. And in the past, I've had other low shoes. Yeah, they're a traditional brand, they're leather, it's calf leather, it's, it's good quality, it's not like the best leather in the world, it's not crappy leather, mm -hmm. it's somewhere in a medium segment. Right. But um, how do you like the suede? Well, I think it's the fact that this is a very sort of traditional English styling uh, helps to offset the fact that I did choose to get a slightly bolder color. Uh, part of the reason I went for something that was different is because, as you'll see as we continue to go through our selections here, I ended up getting quite a few different brown suede loafers. That's just what they offered us in a lot of cases. Okay. So to have something that was different and a little bit bolder, I thought was advantageous. And it's nice that, again, it's, it's offset by that more traditional last yeah. shape. And I mean, they have a lot of classic last shapes, right? A lot of business shoes that you can wear, brown, black shoes, and even the boots. I think this, their suede's are very nice, have a nice touch, kind of a short nap. Mm -hmm. They're not too soft, but they're not, also not super stiff. Right. I think their regular calf letters are maybe a little stiffer. Mm -hmm. Workmanship, they're made in England. As such, they're Goodyear welted, which is like a standard over there. Like they don't do Blake really, England. Mm -hmm. So yeah, what, what do you think about the finishing? I thought that the construction of these was very high quality all around. The stitching was nice and even. I didn't see any loose threads or anything. Uh, the way that the the sole was attached to the upper, I thought was good. No, you know, obvious defects there. Uh, yeah, very, very high quality construction all around, I thought. Good. As far as fit with these is concerned, I was disappointed that they didn't fit me better out of the box for how nice I think they look. Uh, in addition to being loose on my feet overall, my heels do tend to slip out of them. Okay. Uh, I do also have the same problem where they're hitting the underside of my tibias, uh, actually on, on both feet. Oh, um, okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what would you say, what, what size did you get in these? This was size 8 UK, and I did follow the sizing guidelines on their website as to 
taking your typical size, which in my case is an eight and a half US, then you would convert that to UK sizing, which I think is one lower, so that'd be a seven and a half. But they recommended that you size up a half size from what you would normally get. Ergo, I picked a size eight UK, but that all said, they again did not did not fit me as well out okay. of the box as I hoped they would. Do you think half size smaller would be a better fit or would it be too short or what do you think? You know, I think probably having that half size smaller would help. Uh, what I'm noticing in getting a lot of these shoes and a lot of loafers in particular is loafers just by their nature, because they cover less of your foot, are harder to have an exact fit right away. Well, and the problem with a loafer is you don't have the lacing system to keep stuff in place. If you're an Oxford Derby, you can just tie it down. Mm -hmm. With a loafer, the fit is more important because if the tongue comes up further or if the vamp is cut lower, there's even more area exposed. And if it doesn't have a tight heel fit, you just slip in the back. Mm -hmm. So yeah, loafers, buying loafers unseen is always harder right and it's more risky so always make sure that you can return them if they don't fit mm -hmm. and uh, otherwise it's a pain right absolutely and that's definitely something that i went through the learning process with as as we did this with these different retailers i think ultimately these will probably be salvageable for me i could you know make some modifications such as putting an adhesive pad on the tongue here to move my foot back more to the heel of the shoe uh, also, I will need to put into all of these shoes insoles. In my case, they're uh, mainly for perspiration and odor. As we've talked about in previous videos, uh, in particular our video on how to deodorize shoes, which you can find right here, uh, that's something I have to do with all of my shoes, Got is it. put those insoles in there. So yeah. that should probably help to snug up that fit yeah. a little bit as well. In an ideal world, though, people should always get the right size shoe. Absolutely. And sometimes if you're unsure, you can just buy two sizes. I've done that before and then just send the one back that you don't like. Mm -hmm. I mean, with that being said, disregarding the fit, because that's a little harder, right. what would be your rating? I gave these a three and a half, uh, keeping the fit in mind in my rating and also considering that comfort factor that the, the height of the side of the shoe here was rubbing a little bit. Uh, if we were to discount those, those fit issues, given how nice the construction is, how nice I think the look is, these maybe could have gotten up to a four out of five or nice. maybe even higher. All right. Next up, we've got another more unknown brand called Moral Code. Again, viewers wanted us to review them. I've got that Brayson model, which is a penny loafer that costs $228. Okay. My model is called the Holden. It's in a color they call cognac, which as you can see is sort of a tan color. It's a derby shoe, it's wing tipped, it's got broguing. Uh, and this one retails for $198. Okay, so what, what do you think, first impressions, when you got the shoe? Right, well, I thought uh, generally, I, I wasn't super enthused about these, if I'm to be honest. Yeah. Um, some of the models on the Moral Code website are a little bit more fashion forward. They're kind of a more modern brand. So I tried to find something that was a bit more classically inspired. I settled on this wingtip derby. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not crazy about quite how the broguing looks on these, just whether yeah. it's the size of the holes themselves. Yeah, they're quite big, right? Like huge holes and there's no medallion. Right, and I thought that was a little bit odd. Yeah. Definitely it'll make the shoe unique, but I think the the lack of the medallion there, it just, it does seem like something is missing. Yeah, no, I agree with you there. It's also the last is kind of funny. It's round, there's quite a bit in a toe box. I thought the, the brace that I got was a much more kind of classically installed um, loafer. The funny thing was it was advertised as not your grandpa's loafer. <laughs> but if I look at those, I mean, they have a round last, you know, the leather looked very like, very shiny and thicker. Like, I think a grandpa could wear this loafer, right? I, I think that is probably a very apt description. The, the finishes of both of these, yours especially with how shiny they are, but I think w with mine too, the impression I got is that however they, they finished the leather, it just ended up on first sight kind of looking a little bit 
cheap yeah. to me, frankly. And I mean, this is shoe, it's, it's Goodyear welted, but it's made in India, mm -hmm. right? So, I mean, they have lots of cows and stuff there. So, but the tanneries, maybe not up to snuff compared to like, you know, Italian, English or German or French tanneries. And frankly, I mean, it, it's kind of made to look like almost like a shell cordovan, right? Mm -hmm. Also in terms of the color, but the leather is really stiff. It's supposed to be a calf leather, but it's just treated so heavily. It looks like coated, like you can't really see the fine pores as you can see on, let's say, a Merman, for example, which is also burgundy. Mm -hmm. It's a nice, nice comparison. So yeah, definitely kind of a ding on the leather in my book. Mm -hmm. I mean, yours doesn't seem to be as, no, as it's, stiff. No, it's not it's quite finished in the same way. And I think it will, as I at least tested it preliminarily, it did stand up to creasing a bit more. But it seems like you've already got a fair amount of creasing on the top of yours here. Absolutely. And that's the thing, if you have very stiff leather, it's much more like, and if it's coated, it's much more likely to get visible creases very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like patent leather, so it's hard to, to not get creases. It's right. just not, not possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, on the website, they call it like premium calf skin. Mm -hmm. Looking at this, I can definitely say it's not premium calf skin, right? <laughs> I think that's fair, yep. So what about workmanship, what do you think? Well, I, I didn't really see any grievous errors in terms of the stitching, at least. Everything seemed to be fairly consistent there. Same with me. It's all good. Like here in the back, the stitching, it's all very neat. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, your broguing there seems all very kind of centered in a way. It's not yep. off or anything. All very uniform. Um, but at the same time, you know, some of the the leather that was chosen for the different parts of the shoe, there is, you know, right out of the box here, there's already some, some scuffing that I'm seeing with it and some areas of, of slight blemishing or color variance. So even right from out of the box, there there were some of those things that I noticed as well. Got it. Maybe like a little quality control issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So the sizing, I got them in a 10 and a half, mm -hmm. and that's plenty big. They're roomy in the heel, almost too much in the left one. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just looking at them, looking at the letter out of the box, I felt like this is going to be an uncomfortable shoe. And it turned to be more comfortable than I would have thought it would be. Mm -hmm. You can definitely feel that, that the leather is stiffer, yep. but um, it's not an elongated last. It's, it's, it's round. There is some room in there. It's not too roomy. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, it works. Of course, if we have that, it's a loafer. It's more difficult to fit, especially for me with a slim heel. Mm -hmm. I mean, generally, it's very hard for me to find loafers that fit because of my slim heel. Right. And um, when I do, I usually get more of them. These ones are okay, not fantastic. Right. I would say that as far as fit is concerned for me, I would have roughly the same comments. Uh, I got the size eight and a half, um, and they seem to fit fairly well. But again, that's because you know the, you have the added benefit of being able to lace them down as tightly or as loosely as you want to. Uh, there was just the slightest amount of rubbing on my bone with these, but not to the extent of some of the other offerings. Got it. I so it's lower. After a slight break-in period, that would probably go away more and more. Too. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, they're Goodyear welted. Goodyear welted are generally a little stiffer. These are pretty soft for Goodyear welted on the sole. Mm -hmm. So it's a little break-in period, I'd say. The upper letter, I think, will never get really soft. You'll just get creases and they'll, they'll be softer mm -hmm. and it'll work. Yeah, so I mean, overall, I think, you know, $228 for a Gucci welted shoe, all leather, leather lined, is a pretty good price. Yep. Um, it's a little stiff, but in terms of comfort, if, if it works for your foot, to me, they're more like a three, three and a quarter out of five stars. Mm -hmm. um, maybe three and a half even on a good day, maybe, depending on, on the last and the fit. But you can see slight deficiencies, you know, with the brewing size, the styling. It's a little not super classic, and, and you can see that. This on the other end, I mean, it's as classic as it gets in mm -hmm. terms of the look. You can see like the leather, you know, they have a seam here and a seam here. That means their, their leather usage is better. They can get more pieces out of the hide. Right. Not something you typically see in high-end shoes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not a high-end shoe, right. but it's also just 228 bucks for a Gucci welt. Yep, and given that these were uh, just 198, I think it was a fairly decent value uh, for what you're getting. You know, it's a it's a Goodyear welted shoe, as you said. These are 
unremarkable, you know, not the, maybe not the greatest looking shoe in the world, but I would say just slightly above average. I gave them a three out of five. Good. So next up, we have offerings from an Italian brand, uh, Scaroso. Mine is a tobacco brown loafer. I believe the specific model name was Raimondo Cigaro Scamosciato. All right, all right. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I think Scaroso is in fact a German brand, but they're made in Italy. Ah. And they have that whole spiel about everything like Italian. So they embrace the Italian heritage, if you want to call it that. Absolutely, huh. absolutely, yeah. Funny. M mine is something called Andrea Moro, and it's likewise a loafer. I've had Scaroso shoes for years. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the first impression of this was it, it, unusual in a sense because it has woven leather. It's not that many brands that offer that. Mm -hmm. and it's a little more unusual, right? Right, absolutely, yep. My first impressions for this uh, were that it was a nice color. I did like the tobacco brown. I think it's a little bit different than what you might see in the brown colors from some other loafers. The, the toe of these, I did immediately notice, was a little bit more square than mm -hmm. you'll see on a lot of other loafers. Absolutely. So that's another point that makes them a bit more unique, but I did like it for that reason. Yeah, I think mine is a little more rounded, mm -hmm. right? So they have many different loafer lasts. Um, Price-wise, this is like two ninety-five, so more in the higher end of the spectrum. But um, woven leather makes things more expensive because there are no machines that can do that, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, this is actually woven like of an element shoe where it's like embossed, right? So it's different. So typically, woven leather shoes, if it's really woven, are more expensive just by default. Mm -hmm. How much were yours? Mine were two hundred and forty-five dollars. Okay, so 50 bucks less, basically, yes. because you have a suede that are mm -hmm. more susceptible. In terms of workmanship, I didn't have any complaints with these. Once again, the stitching did seem to be fairly even. Yeah, it's a Blake construction, right? I think right. all of their shoes are that, not... Most Italians don't do Goodyear. Just right. like the English all do Goodyear. Mm -hmm. the Italians are like Blake, Blake Rapid. That's just what they do. Right. One thing I did notice actually is that there was on one of the soles here, there's a slight piece where there's a little bit of a gap in between some of the pieces of leather in the sole. Okay. Oh yeah, interesting, yeah. Maybe just the glue mm -hmm. doesn't hold. And I mean, the stitching on mine goes up until here. On yours, I think it looked, little, it's hard to see because you already put the letter sole over it. Correct. I think sizing wise, I got a 44 in this one. Mm -hmm. Typically I have more like 45 or like US 11. Um, but that's really, fits me really well, especially in a loafer. I have still some toe room. It's not off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a soft shoe compared to maybe a moral code. Yeah, much softer. Right. Or Beckett Simono. At the same time, I think it still keeps its shape well. Yep. And also for the old shoes that I've had over the years. Good to know. I got it, this one in a size 41. Uh, I'm a little bit new to European sizing as well, more accustomed to US shoe sizes. So being able to know your size and convert, you know, that's, that's important too. Yeah, at the same time, I find even sometimes within brands, it can change depending on the last. Right. Right? Yep. So it's, it's all relative. It's, it really helps if you know your shoe size and one thing. So if you have any of the shoes that we cover here, you can choose the other pairs based on that sizing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why it always helps to know what size we get in each shoe and how they fit so we can kind of gauge what would work for us and what wouldn't. Right. I think the fit for these, for me, was generally pretty good. Again, being a loafer, they were a little bit on the looser side, but definitely not to as great a degree as some of the other loafers. Any chafing for you there? No, no chafing, no problems with rubbing on the bone. Uh, there's a little bit of heel slippage, but again, with a little bit of a modification, maybe putting a tongue pad in, yep. I'm assuming I could totally alleviate that and they would fit just fine. Yeah, I mean, the cool thing I got here about woven leather is that, you know, it's actually woven, so it's like little holes. It should be more breathable, which is nice in the summer. Right. But then they put in a full leather lining in it, which counteracts that if they had kind of thought about it and perforated it, it would have been even better, I think. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, yeah, it's a more low profile on the side. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, they're all sleek. Like I have these other shoes from them. They're like olive green tassel loafers and they're also very slim and sleek. Mm -hmm. And um, overall have held up really well over the years, despite 
the soles being so thin and the leather being soft, they, they still kept the structure and the look. So frankly, if I look at their classic dress shoe range, I'm not that impressed. So for those, I would probably give them like three and a half out of five stars, mm -hmm. just because I didn't like the look that much. But for the loafers, all of their loafers I had, I think it's like four or four and a quarter stars. Mm -hmm. I think they just are nice and what I would want in like a summer elegant loafer that is comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this was a great shoe option, certainly. Uh, the, the fit was not 100%, as I said, and there were some slight construction issues with the sole coming apart just oh, a yeah. hair on the definitely, one shoe. Yeah, definitely. So I gave these ultimately a four out of five. Okay. Had there not been issues, I probably would have gone even higher with these. So next up is Velasca. Um, I believe, are they actually a genuine Italian brand yes. or are they German too? Yes, they are. They're Italian brand I think founded in Milan okay but then the shoes are made in like middle Italy I think it's town of Marche it's like a city that makes a lot of shoes mm -hmm. and so most of the Italian made shoes we review here probably all come from the same town mm -hmm. it's just how they how they work right oftentimes you have that concentration of silk industry in Como wool fabric industry in Biella it's just very funny how there's a strong concentration where 150 families all choose to do the same thing. So what was interesting about contacting them is that they ended up sending us multiple pairs. Uh, in my case, I got two fairly different styles. This one here is a black single monk strap shoe. On the box that I was given, they called the model the Verdurat, uh, but I believe it's marketed under a different name on their website now. I believe it goes under the name Garcon. All right. So whatever the case may be, that's this model. It's the Black Single Monk. And the other one, this is called the Oast, and it is, as you can see, a brown loafer style. Okay, it looks very soft there. Very soft, yes. Yeah. I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. I have the model Cavadan. First impression out of a box, it felt like pretty nice shoe for under $200. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, leathers seem nice and soft. I think Italians are really good at having like softer shoes like the British shoes are in general all a little stiffer mm -hmm. right Italians are just softer right yeah my first impressions for each of these uh, the single monk I thought it was a nice sort of understated dependable shoe not too flashy uh, this is actually the first monk strap shoe in my collection black is definitely more a conservative color yes. you know it's a, it's a very kind of conservative cut as well so venturing into that world of monk straps but taking a very small step with a conservative style got it what it kind of surprised me was that their styling was more English or conservative. Mm -hmm. The last weren't as kind of refined. They were almost a little kind of boxy and clunky in the toe, very round, mm -hmm. very traditional. Yeah, I was surprised by that because typically if you think of Italian, they're a little more fashion forward and, and those last are not at all like that. Right. Now with their suede, what I really like is they made it waterproof. So suede can be hard to clean and then sometimes you have to spray stuff on but it wears off. Here, I think they put it in the tanning process. And on their website, they're very like detailed. They say it's a calf suede, and they explain that you can have different ways to make a suede. You can just turn it inside out, or you can kind of sand it. Mm -hmm. They didn't actually share which version it is for this one, mm -hmm. which kind of surprised me. Mm -hmm. But I can say it's very soft. It's um, waterproof. Put it under the sink, and it just curls right off. I haven't uh, tried any waterproofing tests with this one, but it was probably out of all of the shoes we were sent, the one that I was, I had the most sort of curious reaction to right out of the box, because as you alluded to earlier, it's very soft. It's got a very kind of flexible construction. There's no reinforcement to the heel here, yep. which I frankly was not accustomed to. Ultimately, it seems to me like this is really more of a, it's almost like a slipper with a hard sole. So in terms of fit for each of these, I thought out of the two of them, the single monk fit better. It was not a perfect fit. There was some, I wouldn't go so far as to say pinching, but there was some tightness in a few areas around the shoe. Uh, that may just be 
<laughs> that my feet are not really accustomed to wearing monk straps, so I might have to play with using the little sizing buckle here if I need to, exactly. just to figure out what the ideal fit is. I mean, they also have slightly different lasts, so that can be the difference too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with these loafers, it, it may have something to do with the fact that the, the heel here is so flexible, but out of all the models we tried, these were the loosest out of the bunch for me. What size did you have? For both of these, I had a 41 and a half European sizing. Uh, so it's interesting that these fit me better. Again, you know, that's because they're, they're a higher style, so they cover more of your foot. But with these, as I say, these were definitely the loosest out of any model we tried. I might almost want to size down to a 41 or maybe even a 40 and a half. That's, that's how loose they were. My heels almost pop right out of these if I try to walk in them. So what, what size did you have in this Caroso? In those, I had a 41, so maybe sizing down to a 41 in these as well would be beneficial. Yeah. I think, again, I just followed the instructions or the sizing guide on their website to determine what I needed. But, you know, when you're new to a brand, it's probably going to be, at least for your first pair, a little bit of trial and error if you're not sure exactly how the last is going yeah. to correspond to your foot. And that's how I think we can help you understanding what, what's the right size for you based on other shoes you've already had in mm -hmm. the past. The shoes are comfortable because the uppers is very soft. The soles need a little bit of break in, but um, nothing, nothing major really. It's still overall a comfortable shoe. Just like I said, it's too roomy, which is fine for comfort, but it's just gonna crease more. Right. Yeah, I would definitely echo those sentiments. Um, the the single monk sole will need some break in, but I didn't even, you know, flexing as much as I could while stepping, didn't see a lot of creasing in the leather. That may increase a little bit as the sole breaks in, but who knows? Mm. Uh, I thought good first impressions there. And again, with these, they're certainly comfortable enough, but they're just so big on just me. Just too big a sizing mm -hmm. thing. I mean, overall, you know, I have a leather heel, right, built up. There's not too much like edge dressing or detail work. Mm -hmm. I think like a, the Merriman had, had more in that regard to offer. But this is also a under $200 shoe. Mm -hmm. So overall, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good value shoe. All right, yeah, I mean, look is more English than Italian. I'd say Scarasso is the softest, and then maybe those because the sole is a little stiffer, and then maybe Ace Marks, the other Italian, mm -hmm. it's maybe even a little stiffer. Overall, they're all relatively soft compared to English shoes, but I would rank them like that. Um, yeah, size 44. I, I'd give it a four out of five because it's 195, you know, it's a very traditional style. You can wear them a lot. All of their shoes are like that. They're evergreen shoes mm -hmm. so when you're starting out and you don't want to spend much money and you want a conservative style i think they're good if you want a little more italian styling maybe the Scaroso is better yeah i would say the same uh in my case i gave these single monks here a three and a half just for some of those fit concerns really more than anything yeah uh, if i were to dial that fit in more these would probably go up to a four maybe even higher uh, and these loafers here Again, I, I was just so taken by, by how flexible this heel was yeah. and the fact that the fit was so uh, lacking. I, I went down as low as a three out of five with these. Yeah. Could maybe go lower, but then again, if they fit better, could maybe go higher too. Yeah. So I settled on a three ultimately. Should have probably just sent them back and gotten a different size. Probably. So next up we have shoes from Undandy. They're another brand that is kind of in this direct-to-consumer type space, and they're trying to differentiate themselves by doing really sort of a fully customizable model. You go onto their website and you can build a shoe from scratch. In my case, what I did was I was watching a Fred Astaire film from the 1950s uh, called Silk Stockings. And in the first few scenes of that film, Astaire is wearing these kind of chocolate brown suede Oxford shoes with a cap toe. And I really like the look of them. So I thought, why not try to kind of construct those for myself? Yeah. So using their online builder, that's the kind of shoe that I built. Yeah, I mean, that's 
pretty cool and unheard of in this price range. Mm -hmm. Usually this kind of made to order program is something you see with more expensive brands. These shoes are like $195, so that's under $200 fully customized. I don't think they stock anything. You just go with their builder mm -hmm. and um, it's pretty remarkable from that yeah, first at first glance, I chose a shoe, I designed one um, that I was inspired by. I think I saw the model on their website of an extensive mm -hmm. selection. And I like the suede with the calf kind of contrast spectator look, but it wasn't like an extreme color difference. Mm -hmm. So for me, those were kind of summery shoes and I, I went with a kind of unfinished, uncolored sole leather, mm -hmm. which is very different than yours. Right, yeah, absolutely. They have a couple of different last options, a few different styles. So the one I chose, they call it the 31 last. It's sort of more of a, you know, conservative style with a smaller, more rounded yeah. toe. The style is, I mean, it doesn't look like a typical shoe from Low or Edward Green or Crockett and Jones. And I was pretty disappointed by their lasts. They were all either modern. So this was this Undandy 15 last. And it's, it's quite like chiseled in a way, it's extreme with a suede, it kind of toned it down. But I was just surprised that the choices of lasts mm -hmm. were just not very refined in, in my mind. Like if you look at high-end brands like Alfred Sargent or Edward Green, Ralph Lauren, they all have like very kind of nice lines. These are more, I don't know, it looks more like a less expensive shoe, which it's pretty easy to change, I think, because it, it doesn't cost any more once you have your design finalized. Right. So I was surprised by that. Yeah, I would agree. I think what I would say ultimately is out of the last options they did have, I chose the one that I thought was the most conservative. Yeah. Uh, the 31 last, as I say, was the roundest. Their next option, the 48, is a little bit longer, a little bit more angular. And then this here, as you've chosen, the 15 last, as you say, is it's very long, very pointy, as you said, kind of chiseled almost. Yeah, the suede is extremely soft and supple. I noticed there were like two blemishes in the leather that they didn't catch, which I'm surprised by because mm. if they make this shoe individually, like, you know, it's not like a mass production thing, they should probably pay a little more attention to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you would think that the attention to detail would be a little bit higher if the shoes are made almost individually. Um, I didn't really have any issues with mine, fortunately. I thought the construction was good, that the spacing of the stitching was fairly even. The only thing that I really noticed about these that I was less than thrilled by is that I did uh, one of the, the customizable options that they have is to just add rubber to the bottom of the sole themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than having a cobbler do it. Yeah. But in doing this, the outside of the sole where the, where the rubber was added did tend to kind of shed or flake off a little bit. There were some extra little trimmings that might not have gotten taken off completely. And Got you can it. also see around the stitching on the sole here, there's still little pieces of rubber that have also kind of hung on too. Got it. So it could have cleaned out a little more. Overall, probably not that big of a deal. In no, terms of definitely not. Longevity, it's, it's more like just cleaning up the shoe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got the leather sole because I like leather soles. And I have to say it's all extremely soft. It's like Blake construction. Um, one of the few shoes that doesn't have any weld stitch, mm -hmm. which looks kind of odd. Some more kind of clean, streamlined, modern design. Um, I got size 44 in the last. And I have to say it's kind of funny because it's a long last, it's modern, but there's not too much room in the toe box because it's so soft, it, it works. But um, the, the front heel is very soft. The back is a little stronger, mm -hmm. but overall because the leather is so soft, you can already after a few times of wear, see those caps, which just doesn't look super flattering. It just looks like a more heavily worn shoe. Right. I think if it was everything a little stiffer, it would look a little better and hold up a little more. Mm -hmm. I mean, the soft sole is certainly comfortable. There's no break-in period, but the heel is a little wide for me. Mm -hmm. So being a loafer, it, it kind of slips a little bit, but I could not size down to 43 and a half in those because it would be too tight in my toe box. Mm -hmm. So just the, the last design is maybe not ideal, but on this kind of last, 
I wouldn't have thought this kind of shoe would have looked any good. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I would agree. I think the, the way that I tried to style it more traditionally, that's why I went for the, the rounder last shape as well. Uh, Fit-wise, I thought these were actually pretty good for me, but again, that's because I can lace them up so they hug the foot a little bit tighter. Yep. I haven't had any issues. Uh, as you say, the sole is fairly flexible on these as well. And yours is extremely thin. Yes. It's right. like, I mean, almost thinner than the Scarosso one, so that's yeah, pretty thin. I think so. Um, they are fairly comfortable to wear as well. I chose to add, which another one of their customizable options is that you can have insoles sent along with these. I've put them in. They are just, I think, kind of cheaper foam insoles. So for the time being, they're going to provide some additional comfort, but I would assume that eventually I'll have to swap those out for the insoles that I put into most of my other shoes anyway. Yeah, I hate insoles, so I never wear them <laughs> and I wouldn't put them in there. I mean, they, they send them, it's nice that you have that option, right? If you know you want that, you like that, cool. I don't care for them. Yeah, I think overall, for the price, you can find other shoes like Velasca who are maybe a little better in terms of the workmanship, but this shoe is really great if you want something very specific that you can't find from any other brand, right? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get my black Oxfords from Undandy, right. but if I wanted something very specific that I couldn't get otherwise and I didn't want to spend a ton of money on it, I think that's your best option. I think if they had maybe better lasts, that would be huge and maybe like options for a weld difference, maybe even a, a Goodyear option or, or maybe a Blake Rapid, but where you could see the weld, I think that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe the option to get slightly stiffer leathers. I mean, then it would be killer. Yeah, I, I was ultimately fairly pleased with these. I, I like the look of them overall. They came out the way that I wanted them to at least, which was the main thing. I did actually swap out the laces in these for some Fort Belvedere laces, which of course you can find in our shop, nice. to uh, match the stitching color even more closely than the laces they themselves provided, which yeah. I think is interesting. Which is nice because having that contrast stitching is I think nice because it adds that little something to mm -hmm. the shoe and having those matching shoe laces is just okay. kind of rounds it out. Yep, so ultimately I was fairly satisfied with these. I, I ranked them as high as a four out of five, but I agree if you want something that is maybe in a bit of a different last style, that's that's where they're kind of limited in their selection right now. So if they were to diversify that a bit more, that could maybe bring some ratings up in the future. Totally, yeah. I would say in terms of, in terms of the quality, it's more like a three, three and a quarter, three and a half. Having that customizing option gets them up there. Right. But ultimately, you know, a shoe where I don't like the last, right, and it doesn't fit me 100%, I'm not gonna wear. Yep. And so even though I can customize it all day long, I'm just not gonna wear it. Mm -hmm. And um, there's lots of other brands that offer all kinds of different shoes and colors and, and different things. So yeah, um, cool that you can offer that at that price point. I think that's really fantastic, but they just have some more way to go. And you know, the workmanship, attention to detail, I can see like here, there's a little bit cutting, it hangs over, it didn't cut it all the way, there's a little bit there. But at the end of the day, that's not a huge thing. You can just cut it up and it's that, but it, it all adds up, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of, yeah, lots of little paper cuts uh, can also Mm -hmm. hurt you. Yeah, so I think in this way, maybe what we'd say ultimately with these is because there are so many different factors, your mileage may vary. So next up is Meerman. This is another brand that's fairly popular across the menswear space. I think I hear a lot of talk about this one. Absolutely. I mean, they're good value and it was actually founded by third and fourth generation shoemakers, right? It's that Albaladejo family from Mallorca. I've been to their Carmina plant ah. and they have a long history. They make really high-end shoes that are more expensive. And so just the younger people in the family got together and said, well, with the globalization, let's actually go to China where labor costs are low. Let's train people up so they can make good shoes. We know what we have to do in terms of last design so it looks good. Mm -hmm. And overall, their, their shoes look much more expensive than they are, mm. I think. That's a big, that's a big thing. I mean, this model here is from their 
higher end line called Linea Maestro. And I think it starts like 290 and goes up to maybe 320. Mm -hmm. So slightly above $300, but it's so close that we still included them. Um, your shoe, how much was that? These were considerably less than, than that line. These were about $175 exactly. for the here. So huge, huge difference, but both still very inexpensive. And I think um, yours is a Gutierrez welted shoe, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is unusual. This is a hand welted shoe, which is something you would never find mm. in this price category. With a Gucci welted shoe, you have like a gem band that is glued onto the sole so the welt can hold. Here, it's actually worked out of the sole, the leather part, and then hand stitched. It's just, it's unheard of in this price category. It's something you get with a bespoke shoe, yeah, not with a $300 shoe. Pretty impressive. So, so that's, that's pretty unusual. And even their lower price shoes, you know, the 175, even they are good you're welted and yep. stuff um, with some attention to detail. So first impressions, very high. Yeah, I would say the same. I thought when I took these out of the box, I thought the color was great. Uh, you know, a very deep, rich, dark brown color. I liked the, the look of the last overall and the, the length of the shoe. And I also noticed too, that they had kind of a, a longer and more pronounced tongue than some other loafers do. But because they've got this long profile overall, I think that helped to kind of balance the look and I like how it turned out. Got it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the leather, they used high quality French calfskin leather and they're very transparent about what letters they use. The um, sole is a Johann Rendenbach sole, which is also high quality. It's German material, very renowned in the shoe world. Um, on that note, though, I went to the Alan Edmonds factory once and they were selling it for their higher end shoe lines. And they said when they did some testings and compared it with their like other Mexican tan letter, the Mexican actually outperformed the German one. Really? But there's this quality perception of Rendenbach mm -hmm. being the best. They put it in their Cordovan shoes, for sure. example, and stuff. So I thought it was funny. That being said, I mean, Rendenbach is, is good leather. Mm -hmm. I've had it on shoes. It lasts for a very long time. I thought generally the, the suede feels nice. It's not, you know, terribly rough. I think pretty good softness here overall. And as far as more generally the construction is concerned, I thought the stitch was generally pretty good. There were maybe, I could see one or two little ends of a thread here and there, but not a major deal by any yeah. means. Yeah, I think they make their stuff in China, but then finish it in Spain, probably with different lines to varying degrees. Mm -hmm. There's not a whole lot written about it, but overall, I mean, yeah, nice leather. I think compared to all the Italian ones, they're not as soft, right? It's more like an English suit in its stiffness. Mm -hmm. It's fairly flexible for that, but it just needs a little bit of break in. What about workmanship? Well, as I say, I thought generally the stitching was pretty good. There were a few things that I did notice. Um, for example, on the, the saddle here, there were some places where kind of the multiple stri strips of leather didn't totally line up 100% in Got this it. saddle here. Okay. There were elements on the sole here where there might be kind of a rough edge at points too. Wasn't totally smooth around the finishing. Got it. So yeah, some of the, the finer points or the smaller details were maybe not 100% on these, but not deal breakers by any means. Yeah, I mean, on my shoes, I think the workmanship was very spot on. Mm -hmm. They used kind of, you know, the irons, they waxed everything. You can see that the stitch density mm -hmm. is different, like a, a clear sign of a hand weld. Right. It's not like a machine. And then they also have like the little, you know, brass nails in the front, mm -hmm. like hand hammered, hand nailed in, supposed to prevent the wear on the tip of your shoe, which they usually yeah. wear out first, all leather heel, you know, built up one by one with nails, with like the, the rubber edge. Um, stitching very neat. I mean, there was no bruging, but overall, this Linea Maestro, which translates to like master's line, mm -hmm. is pretty impressive. Like, if I would not have seen the brand and not known it, I would have not guessed this was a $310 shoe. Mm -hmm. um, I think for, 3750 extra you can get matching shoe trees, which ah. is a pretty nice option. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably definitely get those. They just send them to us. Right. But um, definitely something I'd 
I'd save the money for. Mm -hmm. uh, Color-wise, otherwise letters, very nice. The other thing in the workmanship that I think is particularly good with those is that they're hand-lasted, mm -hmm. which means the upper, you know, is sewn and then it, it's put onto the last and then it's like affixed to the bottom with nails by hand. And that allows you to actually get it exactly where you want it to be. Sometimes with a factory-made shoe elements, you know, it's just slightly off. So you can look at the seam in the back and compare it with the shoe and one is a little off, for mm -hmm. example, compared mm -hmm. to the other. On those, on both lines, even the classic line, they do that by hand. Mm. And it just shows, like the medallion is always going to be centered. And it's just um, a little detail that not many other factory shoes have. Right. Yeah, so my last is called the Dani Last. It's kind of a sleek class. It's a new last. I think in their master line, they have a lot of different lasts. But you can contact them and see if you have a wider foot or narrow foot and what they recommend. It's size 10 and a half, mm -hmm. which fits me pretty well. I have room. It's not too much room. It, it's very kind of comfortable to wear. Again, slightly stiffer shoe, but uh, with a little bit of break in, it's going to be, I think, a great great companion. It has this kind of unique style where there's no cap toe really in the Oxford, kind of that slightly rounded last, timeless yet elegant. Mine were a size seven and a half. That's in UK sizing. It said they were on the RON or R-O-N last. Yeah, otherwise, I mean, I've, I've walked with them. Burgundy is super versatile color. I mean, they're, they're more classic. They also have more like hand patinas that I think are a little more expensive. Overall, I'm really impressed by the shoe. I think maybe they're a little stiff. If it was slightly less stiff, mm -hmm. it would be a solid five out of five for me. That way it's maybe like four and three quarters. Just, yeah, very impressed that a shoe in this price range can be that good. Mm. And obviously I ended up with quite a few medium brown suede loafers from this exercise. So I'm glad that these are quite a bit darker, kind of different in style, so they'll give me another different option to, to wear and pair with my outfits. I thought they were fairly comfortable, but again, given that they are a loafer, there was a little bit of sliding with my foot, nothing yeah. that I don't think could be accommodated by a tongue pad, so I'll probably do that with these as well. And as I said, because this is just the standard line and not the, the higher end line, there were a few little construction things that were less than perfect. So I put these at about a four out of five, ultimately, I think. Next shoes are from Strange Island. And um, as the name implies, they're actually quite strange. <laughs> I think we're only having them because a viewer asked for us to put them in here. Mm -hmm. I think I can quickly run through it. It's a shoe that is like $260, is that right? I think that's right. Out of all the ones we tried, with the exception of your higher-end Meerman models, I think these were, if not the most, some of the most expensive out of yeah, all the ones yeah. we looked at. At the same time, you know, first impression when I looked at it, I mean, the leather color is nice. It's, it's quite stiff, but then in the fabric, it's a very loud shoe. Um, it has like these soft, uh, foam soles and stuff. You couldn't see any welt really and mm -hmm. like the workmanship and stuff is not not ideal and super clean. So it, it just felt like a very pricey shoe. Mm -hmm. Considering we had seen all the other shoes in that price range, right. like this would probably be the last shoe that mm -hmm. I'd buy. Well, first of all, it may have something to do with how they're doing their marketing. Uh, I think these are marketed almost exclusively, if not exclusively, through Instagram. I think that's how I was able to even find their website in the first place. Yeah, I Googled it and I couldn't, I, I Googled like Strange Island Shoes and nothing came up. I was like, well, what is that? Right, so I had to do some digging, but once I went to their website, looked at their shop page, saw some of their other offerings, this was even one of the more conservative styles, to put that in perspective. Exactly. So and that's would, pretty loud, I mean. I would definitely put these almost more in the realm of a fashion brand more than a style brand. Exactly. And this is not really a classic men's dress shoe. I mean, construction-wise, I know Blake, it's some leather. I mean, I don't know how good it really is. They're made in Italy, mm -hmm. right? The last is kind of elongated and kind of weird. Um, since there's no welt, the, the, the uppers is very close to the edge of it. Mm -hmm. It comes with these super red shoelaces, you know, super bright, makes you stand out like a 
colorful dog. <laughs> I mean, you put in some other ones. That's right. These are some gray laces, again, from Fort Belvedere. I picked these out because I thought they would harmonize well with kind of the color palette of this herringbone fabric. So now that I've done that, I think that immediately takes the, the boldness of the shoe down a notch to something that could at least be theoretically wearable, yeah. but that red lace is definitely much bolder. Maybe with a gray suit in the fall, you mm -hmm. know, you can pull it off once, but it's very hard to combine shoe unless you want to really stand out. And at $260, I mean, if I want something like that, I'll probably go to Undandy and customize something that bold mm -hmm. would, would run you less probably than those. Yeah. So yeah, I won't get much wear out of those. And uh, yeah, not a classic dress shoe. Right. So my rating, honestly, is like one. Mm. One out of five <laughs> because I just wouldn't wear it. Right. I think I was a little bit more generous, but I didn't really rank these any higher than like a two and a half out of five, which is still a C grade ultimately. So yeah, yeah take that for what it's worth. The last but not least were a brand called Ace Marks. If you followed our channel, we've mentioned them before. We've worked with them together on our videos. So I actually have over like 10 pairs of those. Mm. So, and I've had them over a little while. So I've had a chance to test them out. I think they're adding some other stuff now. This is kind of their classic line and it's retail price is $2.99. They often did Kickstarters and that's how they started. And at that point, they're like under $200. My slogan was always, are these the best shoe in the world? Absolutely not. But at under $200, they were a good value. Mm -hmm. Very similar to kind of Velasca or Scarosso, right? Made in Italy. Same kind of, I mean, you look inside the shoe, it looks very similar. Mm -hmm. Has that kind of suede part in the back that's supposed to keep the heel in. I think what they do well, like first impression is always that their patinas are nice. It's like they add like some handwork to it. And um, just like Undandy, who offer these like really elaborate patinas, you can also get that from, from Ace Marks. Mm -hmm. Leathers, calf. I think the shoe that they sent you was uh, a little different, right? Yes, uh, you'll notice that I don't actually have one here today. I do have one pair of Ace Marks shoes, but the one that they had sent me when we coordinated was it was a hand painted model. It was a whole cut Oxford, sort of one of their higher end ranges. And I believe the price point for that was $425. Got it. So outside of the price range we're working with here today, which is why I don't have it with me, but some of the other similar whole cuts that are not hand painted retail for closer to what's in this range, I think about $325. Yeah. And we'll cover that in another video. But overall, leather quality, it's like it's box cap. It has a nice patina. I'm pretty sure it's Italian leather because that, that's what they do. It has kind of a shiny finish. And because of that, sometimes it can seem like it crackles a little more than other leathers do. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't think it's because of an inferior leather quality. It has kind of a medium medium between softness and stiffness, stiffer than like the Velasca leather and the Scaroso, but definitely um, softer than like the Mermin or some English leathers like Loke, I'd say. They have some colorful models that I don't care for that much. Mm -hmm. They have some classic styles. And if you compare it to the Scaroso de Velasca, it's a much more Italian style. I look at this shoe and I immediately think that's an Italian style. It's slightly more elongated. It's still round. Um, the last fits me very well, personally. So it, it always, it's a plus, right? If it fits your foot very well. Mm -hmm. There's not too much room, but I, I have enough. This is Blake Rapid. They now also have more expensive ones, which are Gucci welted. Workmanship is decent. The broguing is, you know, in the middle. There's nothing off. The medallion is on there. Nothing to really complain about. I think... Yeah, I've worn them. They're holding up. Now, it's just the, the pricing, right? I mean, if you get them at a Kickstarter price, you'll have to wait for them. It's similar to like Beckett Simonon, mm -hmm. right? Where you, you have that part in there where they don't have to pre-finance it and stock it. I think then they're a, a really a, a, a good deal. That being said, they were looking at Velasca, for example. I think they're very comparable, very similar, but Velasca stocks them, so you don't have to wait. That is pretty neat. 
the styling is very different. If you like the traditional styling, I think the Velasca is better. Mm -hmm. um, if you like more Italian style, I think this is better. They're very similar to Scaroso in a way, and Scaroso is also priced like 250 to 300. Mm -hmm. And the patina overall is not as exciting, but um, Ace Marks doesn't have the woven leather, for example. So it just depends on what you want. Right and what, what you can find. Yeah, I will say that in my case, the, the pair of Ace Mark shoes that I do have, I really, I was very impressed with them. Uh, the comfort was great right out of the box. They, they fit me perfectly. So I guess we're similarly lucky in that their lasts are good for our feet. Uh, but I had no fit issues with the pair that I do have. Um, they, as I said, they're hand painted. They had a more extreme patina. It was really, more than an ox blood, it was almost kind of a red color that yeah. darkened toward the toe. And when I first got them, my first impressions is that they were too bold and that I probably wouldn't wear them. But since then, I've actually worn them four or five times already with different outfits. They've paired very well with some red and blue shadow striped socks from Port Belvedere, for example. Nice. Uh, I've gotten several compliments, actually, on that pair of shoes. They've been very well received by people. I mean, they, they stand out in a way, and I think something they really focus on is like that um, it's soft and it doesn't require any break in time. Mm -hmm. um, so, like my father-in-law has arthritis and he got a pair and he liked them because they were just out of the box wearable. Now, I mean, we had the others here, right? Scaroso, I think, are pretty much comparable. Velasca, so slightly thicker. Mm -hmm. So I'd say at like full price, $2.99, I'd rate him more like a three and a half probably, especially compared to the Mirmin. I think at $300, there is nothing that beats the Mirmin or comes even close. Ace Marks doesn't also. If they're less expensive, if you get them for $200, I think they're on, on par with the Velasca. And then I would say Velasca got four out of five. Then it just comes down to styling and, and personal preference. Yeah, my pair, again, not really in this price range, so it might not be a totally fair comparison. But I like those enough that I would give them a four out of five. Uh, if I were to get something more in this price range, who knows what my ranking would be. But uh, overall, I, I was impressed with the pair of Ace Marks that I got. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, we certainly spent a lot of time, you know, wearing the shoes, <laughs> testing them, figuring out the differences, and the same things. And overall, I mean, my winner of this whole test was Mirman. Um, I definitely want to check out their classic line now, simply because I want to see how they stack up against this uh, Linea Maestro. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah super impressed and I would say like there's that Miramin Linea Maestro, then there's nothing for a little while and then come all the others. But um, it all depends on your budget, right? If, if you just have $200 and you maybe want three pairs of shoes, that's $600 versus maybe $900. I understand that, that you go that way. If you have any time to save up a little bit, maybe that's the right way. And ultimately, like the styling comes in too, right? The colors, if you want something more unusual, Miramin is probably not the right company for that. They're mostly like black, brown, maybe have a little bit of green here and there, but mm -hmm. they're more have the kind of evergreen sellers, classic lasts and styles. Mm -hmm. So what about you? What was your favorite shoe? I was also very impressed by Miramin. I think the Scaroso models out of the ones I have here today might have actually taken the cake for me. I think nice. they might be my favorite. But yeah, Mirman was very good. Uh, again, I happened to maybe get lucky with my undandy models. I was impressed by them as well. And as I said, I liked Ace Marks, but the ones I got were a little bit outside of this price range, so might not be a totally fair comparison. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it, it all depends on what you want too, right? You want cool loafers, maybe Scarosa is a good brand. You want Oxfords or Derbys or something, maybe you go with Mirman or you check out the Ace Marks or other shoes. But uh, I hope it helped you. But give us a thumbs up and please share your feedback in the comments, how we can improve, what we can do better. If you like the conversational format, that's great. We'll try to do more of these. And if you want to see more distinctly brand-centric content like we did here today, let us know about that too. And Absolutely. we'll see what we can put in the pipeline. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers.
Thank you.